Good evening. My name is Kacper Paradowski and you are watching Poland Daily News. Polish Prime Minister Mateusz Morawiecki announced today new restrictions aimed at stopping the rapid increase in new coronavirus infections in the country. From tomorrow, the whole of Poland will be in the so-called red zone. Today, the Polish Ministry of Health announced over 13,000 new coronavirus infections and 137 deaths, including 16 resulting directly from COVID-19. The whole of Poland will be classified as a red zone starting tomorrow. This means that all the restrictions which the residents of red zones have had time to get used to, they live, go to work and schools there, will apply to the entire country. Second of all, another crucial change which we're introducing today is online education for classes 4 to 8 of elementary schools in order to reduce social contact. The owners of pubs, restaurants, restaurants and cafes will not be able to run their businesses as usual. They will be able to offer takeaway orders only. For now, these restrictions will enter into force for two weeks. We will extend them if we don't see any improvement in the number of infections two weeks from now. The most important thing for now is to reduce the number of infections. The projection that I presented was prepared on the assumption that the epidemic continues to spread. We have to do everything, we have to obey rules in order to stop the growth of the epidemic and reach the linear trend. If we succeed, and please note that the effects of the restrictions will not be visible immediately, but in 10 days or even two weeks, then there is a chance that we will reach the linear trend. This would be a great and a fundamental change. If we reach the linear trend of growth, we will have between 13 and 15,000 infections during the next week. This means that the next week will be crucial. Today, President Andrzej Duda visited the field hospital being built at the National Stadium in Warsaw. The temporary hospital, which will have a capacity of 500 regular beds and 50 ventilator beds, is to be used as a strategic reserve in the event of an outbreak. Today, as you can see, the time has come for the temporary hospital to be implemented due to the expanding coronavirus epidemic in Poland. I want to stress that this is a security investment. It is not that we have a problem today that we are trying to solve by putting beds in here. Ultimately, it will be even several thousand beds, which will be created in the next days and weeks for COVID patients. However, I would like to emphasize one thing. It is to be hospital, which will constitute an extra security measure. If the pandemic continues to develop very quickly and decisively, if there is a shortage of places for the sick in the hospitals, only then will this hospital be launched. I emphasize that this could happen when the need arises. Then this place will be able to receive patients as early as next week. We discussed the strategy, which is currently being implemented by Prime Minister Morawiecki. I am convinced that this is a good strategy for these difficult times, and I thank you for preparing it in advance. I hope that it will help us overcome the epidemic and, above all, we must limit the spread. The left seem to be unable to accept the judgment of the Polish Constitutional Tribunal, which ruled yesterday that the so-called eugenic clause, under which children with Down syndrome and other genetic diseases, as well as severe deformations, were aborted, is unconstitutional. Yesterday evening, pro-abortion demonstrations took place in several cities. The decision of the Constitutional Court also provoked an angry reaction from the European left. After the Constitutional Tribunal decided that abortion due to severe damage to the fetus is unconstitutional, numerous protests took place across the country. The largest crowd in Warsaw passed from Novogrodzka Street, where Law and Justice headquarters are located, to Jarosław Kaczyński's house. The police detained at least two people. At 1.30 am, the protest was interrupted as the protesters clashed with the police. Fifteen people were detained as a result. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
In connection with the ruling of the Constitutional Tribunal, there are to be changes in the pro-life program, which is to provide support for mothers raising children with disabilities. The regulation that was questioned by us was, in many places, unprecise or unclear. The second argument behind the fact that this regulation was unconstitutional were earlier decisions of the Tribunal. On the other hand, the MPs of the left announced the submission to the same of a bill assuming the depenalization of abortion procedures. The order to give birth to terminally ill children is, in fact, not a decision of some tribunal, but of Jarosław Kaczyński. It is a cowardly decision taken in the middle of an epidemic. Robert Biedron took the initiative of a European Parliament resolution condemning the court's ruling. Women's rights are human rights, and in our political grouping there is no permission to violate them. That is why I have taken the initiative to file a resolution condemning this disgraceful sentence on Polish women. Poland is not North Korea, we are in the center of Europe and have its support. According to the information of the RMFFM correspondent in Brussels, there will be a resolution of the European Parliament against the decision of the Polish Constitutional Court condemning the ban on abortion due to malformations. It may be voted already in the middle of next month, that is, at the next plenary session of the European Parliament. French teachers have sprung into action this week, encouraging their colleagues to speak up against self-censorship after the gruesome beheading of history teacher Samuel Paty by an Islamist refugee and terrorist after Paty had shown images mocking the Prophet Muhammad in a lesson on freedom of expression. The history teacher was murdered after showing his students the pictures of Muhammad, which were first published by the satirical Charlie Hebdo magazine in 2006 and which led to a deadly Islamist attack on its Paris office in 2015. Patti's murder on October 16th has caused outrage in a country where state secularism is state doctrine. History teacher Juliette Benali, who, like Patti, teaches in a disadvantaged Paris suburb, said she has received messages of support from students. I am Juliette Benelli. I've been a teacher for 10 years in history and geography, and for past seven years I've been working at the Romain Roland Comprehensive School. When I have my students in front of me, they are not Muslims. They are not from the Maghreb, Turkey, Africa or any other place. They are students. They are students and we are all present in class as scientists. If we do something, we do it for the students in the interest of the students. Patti's murder has also exposed divisions in a society where a vocal minority in the Muslim community feels its beliefs are not respected. Fellow French language teacher Delphine Girard says it is more difficult to discuss certain issues in schools where a large share of the students are Muslim. Depending on the establishment in which you are located, there is a school population whom you find yourself facing. In more difficult school environments, in more disadvantaged cultural environments, and of course there are subjects that are extremely delicate, and whether we approach them with a pedagogical approach or not, it depends on the choice you make and on what you are able to handle as a teacher and as a person in terms of an uncomfortable environment, because you are in a difficult place you are in the minority. Many teachers have stated that they will seek concrete reassurances from President Macron when the October half-term holiday ends. That's all for tonight. Thank you for watching. Stay with us for Poland Daily Business. Good night.